Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. Uh, we're continuing work on our platformer game. And in this video, we will start talking about how to animate our little rabbit character that we added in the previous video. OK, in the last video, we added graphics for our player. So I'm using the little rabbit sprite here. And so now we have the, the rabbit just standing still is our is our sprite, right? Which is fine and it looks okay, but obviously we could add some more personality and some more, uh, and make it look a little better if it had a little bit of animation to it. And if we look at the, if we go over here and look at the, at the sprite sheet, there are a bunch of different uh, frames of animation for this rabbit, right? So we have the walking, which is in two parts. Uh, which is this one and this one, All right? So stepping, so if you animated, if you were to animate between these two, it would look like the rabbit is walking. And then you flip them in the other direction if you're walking the other direction. We also have the idle animations. We're using this one right here right now for standing. There's also this one right here. See the ears come together and the feet go up a little higher. So then it looks like it's sort of bobbing in place. And that's your idle animation, meaning what happens when you're sitting still and not moving. And then we also have this one here, which is what we, you would use when you jump up in the air. And they're all listed over here in the XML under the bunny one names. We have the two frames of walking. We have our jumping, ready and stand. And so we want to add all of these different frames in and basically just switch the image of our sprite at the appropriate time to the correct frame. So here's our player sprite. And this is where we're going to want to start changing our, all of our uh, image code. So First thing, we're going to need a few variables to keep track of things so we know what frame to use at a given time. So we're going to make a couple of variables here, one called walking, so that we know whether we should be showing the walking animation or not when we're moving. We'll make one called jumping, so that we know uh, whether to show the jumping frame of animation. And then we're also going to need a variable to keep track of what frame we are on for those animations that have more than one frame, like the walking animation it has two frames. So this will be zero or one. If you have an animation that you're using that has more frames of animation, four or five or whatever, this will work the exact same way. This will just keep track of which one it's on. And the last thing we'll need here is we're also going to need a variable to keep track of what time we made the last change. And that'll allow us to, to set the animation speed, right? We don't want to change the walking frame every frame of the game because that would be 1 60th of a second and it will be too fast. So we want to space out the frame rate of the walking animation so that it looks, uh, so it looks right. So if we keep track of when we last made a change, we'll know whether it's time to make a change to the next one. Okay, and so now we have to load all the images, just like we did here to get the one, we're gonna have to get all these images out of the sprite sheet. And there's gonna be a bunch of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just group those all together in a new method called load images. Okay, that way everything's a little bit more organized and we don't have to clutter up our init anymore with a lot more things. Okay, so now we wanna load all these frames. And so we have basically three animations. We have the standing animation, which has two frames in it. We have the walking animation, which has two frames in it. And we have the jumping animation, which has one. Now, if you're using a different set of graphics, you went and found a different character with more frames of animation, you might have more than that. Um, plus the, the walking one needs to have the opposite direction as well. We have right or left. So we need to load all of those things. 
Okay, let's start with the two uh, standing uh, frames. So, so we'll make those. That's going to be a list because we have two of them, right? One of them is this one. So we're going to put that in the list. And then the second one, which we will also put in here, um, just has some different numbers. So stand is the one at 614, 1063. So we want the one at this one. So we're going to grab this one and put this one as the other sprite that we're going to load. Make that a comma. So those are our standing frames. And now we need to assign the walking frames. Now we have two of them, or two directions, right? So we need to look at this uh, sprite sheet again. The walking frames in the picture here are going to the right. So those are the ones we're going to use without any changes. So we're going to use, uh, we'll call this walk frames R. We'll have left as well. Uh, we're going to, oops, we're going to paste in um, a get image command. So I'll just copy that from here. And then we know we're going to want to just change the locations. So walk one is this one. And then we also have walk to, which is going to go here, and we can, again, grab walk twos, and actually grab the numbers for that one, and then we'll have those two. So now we have the two walking frames for going to the right. Going to the left, is basically going to be the same thing. We just want to flip them, right? So what we want to do is take each of these two images and apply the flip uh, transform to them. Okay, so we'll make a uh, walk frames L. Okay, and that's going to be a list. And then let's just look at the ones in the walk frames R. Got my in. So we're going to just go through each of them and then we're going to append uh, the flipped one to the left facing uh, list. So what we want to do is say walk frames L dot append tie game dot transform dot flip. You want to flip that frame. And then the way the flip command works is you can flip something either horizontally or vertically. We want to flip horizontally and not vertically. So uh, depending on which one of these you set to true or false, the first one is the horizontal flip, the second one is the vertical flip. So now we'll have the two I just noticed I spelled transform wrong. We'll have the two frames stuck in there in the left list. And then the last one we need to load is the jumping one. And the jumping one is not an animation. We only have one oops, we only have one frame for, for the jumping. Um, if you had an animation that had more than one frame, you could load that here just the same way. But we're just going to grab the uh, jump one here. Maybe we'll come back and add the hurt one later if we uh, if we add that. So this is going to be um, the jump frame, um, and this is going to need to have a get image command and fix the formatting. And 
there we go. So now we've got all of our images loaded that we want for our character. Now we can go back over here and our starting image, we can set that to the standing uh, frames number zero. Um, that'll be loaded because we call load images first, which goes down here and does this. Um, oh, and I just noticed I left out a self there. Uh, okay, so when we run this, we should just see the exact same thing. We should just load our normal guy. Oops, of course I typed high game, didn't I? PG. All right, and so now we're going to load that first image, right? And we have the standing frames. Now, so now what we need to do is if we're standing still like this, we need to alternate between the two standing frames. And then if we start moving left or right, we're going to alternate between the walking frames for that direction. So let's just get the idle animation, the standing animation working first. So Here's our update. In our update, we're going to want to go through this, you know, handles all our movement. We're going to want to go through and figure out what frame we need to be on. Now that can be kind of messy too. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another um, method called animate. And we'll let that handle which frame we want to use. And that'll just go through and pick out, you know, depending on what we're using. Now remember, I said we had this um, last update, right? That's going to be keeping track of what time it was that we changed, and that's how we're going to know whether it's time to change to the next one in the list. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what time it is right now. Okay, and that will get us how many ticks of the clock it's been since the game started, since we initialized everything. And now we need to know um, if we're if we're going to show the idle animation. That means we're not walking and we're not jumping. So we'll just say if not jumping and not walking. And those are both false right now, right? Because we set them to false to start with. So those will be true at the moment anyway. So if now minus the last update, right? If that amount of, that will tell us how long it's been since whatever timestamp last update is. If that time has been greater than, and we're gonna try 200 milliseconds. This is in milliseconds here. And we'll see if that works. And then we'll, we'll play around with it once we see. But anyway, if 200 milliseconds have gone by since the last update, then we want to update. So we're gonna set the last update equal to now. And we're gonna oops, and we're gonna set the current frame equal to right. We started on we, oops, scroll up here. We started with current frame set equal to zero, right? So we want to add one, which should get us to one. But if we were on one and we add one, we don't want to go to two. We want to wrap around. So what we want to do is say um, self dot current frame is equal to self dot current frame plus one, and then we use that the remainder function, um, and then we say whatever the length of standing frames is. So if you have two frames in there, it's going to get you the remainder when dividing by two, if you have three, if you have four, so on. So now we can set our image equal to standing frames, whatever frame we're supposed to be on. Okay. And that should let us animate our character. So let's see what happens. Oops. And once again, I'm defeating the purpose of us abbreviating things if I'm going to keep typing out game when I say it out loud. So let's fix that. Now we can run again and see. Okay. Now we're almost there, but look what happens. So we have two things we still have to fix. 
One is uh, we did not uh, set the color key on the frames. But the other is, you see how the, the feet are sticking downwards? So it's not going to look like our character is jumping up and down. It's going to look like it's centered. Um, and then the frame is, it, the feet are just poking downwards. So we actually need to relocate our rectangle a little bit so that the whenever it alternates frames, the rectangle bottom stays the same. I also think we can slow down the animation a little bit too. That's a little too fast. Okay, so let's go over here and change this to, oh, let's say 350. And then up here in our loading, right, we're setting the color key. Um, we had set the color key originally to the first one, but we need to do it to all of them, right? So let's do, let's take that out and in our each of our frames, we can just say, we can just say, and then we just set frame. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with the what well, frames are, and then we won't have to. We won't have to do it with, actually, we already have a loop we could do, use. We could do it with this loop. We could just say, uh, we, we could just copy this and do that. OK. And then we need to just do it with the jump frame. So there we go. All right, now let's take a look, and then maybe you can see what I was talking about with the feet. There we go. So see how my feet are going down into the ground? So it doesn't look like I'm standing on the ground. I, I need to look like I'm bouncing up and down a little bit. So whenever we change, uh, oops, over here on the sprites, whenever we change which frame we're on, we're picking the new image. We need to change our rectangle. Okay, so we need to take our current, we basically need to keep track of where the bottom of our rectangle is. Okay, so bottom is equal to self.rect.bottom. And then we need to get a new rectangle. We just get the new rectangle for the new frame we switched to. And we set the bottom equal to that bottom that we hung on to from the last time. And that will look like this. There we go. So there my guy looks like he's idling and just standing in place while I'm not moving. Now, obviously, he's going to keep doing that no matter what I do at the moment uh, because we haven't done the jumping um, or the walking frames yet. But you get the idea. We'll do the same thing with walking and standing still. So let's stop the video here. We've been a little over. Uh, we've been over 15 minutes here. So, um, and in the next video, we'll finish up the character animation by adding the uh, adding in the jumping, the jumping animation and the walking animation for when we move. All right. Thanks for watching.